I really wish those crows would shut the fuck up. All right, this is gonna be a dimension video. I've had a few people ask dimensions on where to locate the subframe in the rear. So I'm going to make a quick video, I don't think it should be too long, on dimensions of where the subframe is in the back of the truck. And I'll use stock points on the frame so you can measure and find out where yours is gonna be. I'll tell you where mine is height wise, but that's completely up to you. So, all right. And this video is brought to you by Drownlands. Rare Earth. It's not brought to you by these guys. This is another one from these guys. It's a Pilsner. I really like it. Ooh, it's a food Pilsner. Ooh, right on. Yeah, these guys make good stuff. All right, first thing. Obviously, it's not really a big deal, but I went with outside to outside dimensions on the stock frame because that's where my rails were. And that's just a hair under 42 inches. It's like 41 and 15 sixteenths. But that's really just outside of stock frame rail to outside of stock frame rail. Now, what I would have done different is when I brought these rails in, these rails are brought in on a 45 degree angle on both sides. So they turn in at a 45 and they straighten back out at a 45 to come out the back. Um, this angle right here, you have a flat on your stock frame rail when it comes to the back and it comes up, this is 24 degrees, give or take like a but 0.2 degrees, depending on what time of the day it is and which way the wind's blowing, it's, a, it's 24 degrees. So, whatever you do, if you're gonna follow this rail straight up and then come straight back, you're gonna come up 24 degrees and then you're gonna flatten back off, like you're gonna go back 24 degrees to make them level up top. What I would have done different up here, which is why I have these rails on here now, is I would not, have taken these rails right here and brought them in so far. Meaning like this, I would have made these turnouts probably closer to where these tubes are and come right over top of the rear upper control arm pickup point. That's why I put these tubes on here so I didn't have a big long shock mount coming out to mount the shock. So if you do it, these are 22 and 9 sixteenths outside to outside on these. So, obviously, if you come out, you don't want them dead nuts over them. Well, you could have them right over top of the two mounts in the back. Those are right here. But if you brought them out a hair to the outside, let's say. Let's see. That's. Three and a half. So if you did seven more inches, so if you did outside to outside, 29 and 9 sixteenths, 29 and 9 sixteenths outside to outside is a good spot to put those frame rails. You'd still be able to make a mount on the inside of the frame rail that would be here, and you'd be super close if you're going to mount your shocks like this. So this is all suggestive stuff from here. Um, let me think of anything else for this way. I think that's about it. Stock frame width on the outside, 45 degree in, 45 degree bends in here. This guy's a 24 degree angle across here. What else? I think that's it for this portion. Now I will switch to the side and show you up and down dimensions and I'll give you the frame dimensions of where to locate your, your first two mounts off the stock frame to put this subframe at your wheelbase measurement. Remember when I said footer? You can impress your beer friends if maybe you drink Bud Light or something, that's cool. But the footer is the wooden vessel they usually use to age wine in. But beer guys have gotten into them now and use them to age beer, so. Mention that in front of your beer nerd friends, and you might impress them if you're into that thing. All right, these dimensions are all going to be from bottom of frame. So when you have your truck set up, level it out, and you can stick a, a four foot level 
two foot level, whatever, off the bottom of the frame. And all these measurements will be from the bottom of the frame up. So your first pickup point right here, which is the mounting surface, the top mounting surface on the subframe, is 7 and 3 sixteenths. So from the bottom of the frame to the top or the bottom, the top of your subframe or the bottom of your mount is going to be 7 and 3 sixteenths of an inch. Once you figure that point out, the subframe from this pad to this pad, the difference is 145 millimeters. So from here to up here is 145 millimeters. Uh, what's next? If you choose to mount that at that height, where that is, that's going to put your axle center line off your differential, which is dead nuts of your drive flanges coming off the differential. You're going to put that from bottom of frame, it's going to be 9 and 7 eighths inches to center of your drive axle. Now that's drive axle on your differential, not out here, not on your wheel. But it's going to be close to that. That's if you put this where mine is, and I'll explain why I put mine where mine is. Uh, let's see. Oh, next dimension is from, if you look at this, this is the cab mount, this is the rear cab mount. It's got four bolt holes that mount the puck that holds the cab in. If you go to the rear two holes, and if you drew an imaginary line, like from the left side of the chassis to the right side of the chassis, and intersected those two holes, and you went straight back to the, to the hole where this uh, subframe is mounted, it's 21 and 3 eighths. So from the rear two holes on your cab mount to the subframe is 21 and 3 eighths. That locates the subframe and gives you your wheelbase of, I think it's 104.3 inches. All right. I think if there's anything else there. One over that, one over that, one over that. I think that's it. All right, now, well, I'll show you what I was talking about real quick. That's what I mean, these two holes right here. So if you drew an imaginary center line between these two guys and then pulled a measurement back to right in line with this, that's your measurement. All right, the reason I went with mounting the subframe where I did is with the truck sitting at ride height, I didn't want the rear suspension to be completely jacked up like a lot of the 240s are because the guys run the car so low that it takes your outside upright out here and it raises it way up to get the car low. So what I did is I set the truck frame at low ride height and basically raise the subframe up into the frame so that you can see all the control arms. My lower control arm, my tow rod, my rear upper control arm, everything is sitting almost at a factory angle where the car was meant to use it at. So I don't have to come in and screw around with all these geometry changes for roll center and everything like that because the suspension is sitting where it should be and not, like if you look at a lot of guys, they have clearance tow rods that are bent because this tow rod is interfering with this upper mount up here. That's the angle. So their tow rods are sitting pretty much almost like this. So that's the reason I went with my subframe where it's at. Now, depending on if you're not gonna cut into your bed or not, Pay attention to all the other dimensions I told you. Just don't worry about where the dimensions I told you where my frame is up and down. Figure out what's going to work for you. And where this is all sitting right now, I forgot to mention this in the last segment, but from bottom of frame to top of frame, which is right here, it's 17 and 5 eighths of an inch. So if you set out a line off the bottom of the frame and you have a bed on your truck and everything else and you measure up 17 and 5 eighths inches and realize that it's going to get into your bed frame then maybe it's bed frame your bed floor then maybe 
you could get away with dropping this subframe down a little bit and make a little more space, which you could probably realistically drop this thing down maybe an inch, inch and a half. Start going any more than that and you're gonna be in the 240 guy territory where the subframe is gonna be low and you're gonna have all your suspension arms up to make up for it. But if it keeps you from cutting into your bed floor, um, that might be something you look into. Also, I forgot to say from the top of the frame to the very tippy top of my shock mount, it's gonna be about two and a half inches. So that's another thing to think about, but you could, if you did something like this, you could just make two very small cutouts in your bed floor just to clearance the shocks. Because these shocks are uh, relatively short for this. Um, I did have the mounts made so everything fit on the Z32 uprights. So uh, if you went with the stock 240 uprights, the steel ones, you could probably go with a shorter shock than this because you wouldn't have you wouldn't have this stuff to deal with, the, the saddle bracket on the bottom to deal with. So you could actually go eye to eye and it would probably save you an inch and a half or something on the bottom of this shock. So it would be possible to probably get a complete 240 subframe under the bed without having to cut the bed floor out. And unfortunately, I don't have a bed here, so I can't measure and figure it out. And even if I did, I'm still gonna probably have to cut the bed floor out for the cage and everything else on this, so it really doesn't matter. And this is for an S14 subframe. I don't know what, the S13 is a little bit different, I know it's not a lot because I know SPL makes the diff bushings, the diff bushings, the subframe bushings that go in and they're actually almost like an eccentric where the center point is off center so you can roll them to fit an S14 subframe and an S13. So I'm sure if you get measurements for an S13 subframe, you can probably cross-reference them off from the S13 to S14 and figure out the differences and then you can actually do the math and figure out from this math, from the math, this measurement right here, and figure out what the difference is to put an S13 subframe in. So, I hope that helps somebody, some people, from putting an S14 subframe in your Nissan Hardbody or your Nissan Pathfinder. So, if you got any questions, ask away. Um, if you would I do this all over again um, with an S14 subframe? Probably not. I, only because I would probably go with something newer. That's all. 350Z. I hear a lot of guys are doing the the Mustang. I think it's S550 rear subframe. You got it's it's new technology. It's new stuff. I mean, do, there's still plenty of aftermarket support for the S chassis stuff. So. It's not a horrible deal, um, but if you are going to buy a used subframe off somebody, make sure it's not screwed up because I have another S14 subframe up there and the car was obviously in an accident because after I went through and got all the bushings out and started to get ready to do everything, I looked at it and I was like, oh, I'm just going to measure and make sure this thing and I measured it and you could see the rear hoop, it was the rear, that's obviously upside down. Uh, I think it's not this side, it's the other side. The car was hit from the rear, and that piece right there is tweaked in. So, I mean, obviously it's fixable. I just have to make a jig up, put it in a jig, and put it back where it belongs. But, yeah. Make sure when you're buying a subframe that it comes out of a straight car. If you got any questions, ask away. Hopefully that helps a few people.